Okay, so these are the things that you should use to solve a pedigree chart. So these are the steps you take every time you get a pedigree. The first step is that you need to number each person. Now sometimes if you get a pedigree, let me show you a quick example. For example, this one right here. That's your worksheet that we're going to be doing later. Notice that these people have names. Usually people don't have names on a pedigree when we're solving it in science because like in a normal family, sometimes the names are passed down. So you might have like an Uncle Bobby, but then your dad's also named, you know, or your brother's also named Bobby, and that's very confusing. So normally, we number these. The way you number them is you go from left to right. So let me just show you an example. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Another thing that's in most pedigrees that isn't on this one, this is just an introductory sheet, is that they number each generation with Roman numerals. So this would be generation one, generation two, generation three, we'll get to that, oops, three, and generation four. Okay, so that's your step number one. You're gonna number each person. Second, you're gonna identify your dominant and recessive traits. Okay, Alex, can you please sit back in your desk? So when you're identifying your dominant and recessive traits, it means you're going to identify what is going to be your capitalized letter and what's going to be your lowercase letter. And so again, that's identifying your dominant and recessive traits. Number three, you're supposed to write the genotypes for as many people as you can. So they, there will usually be a little word problem or a sentence before you start a pedigree. Like on this one, there's a whole little paragraph about the background of the family. And they will tell you a little bit about them so you can identify what genotypes some people are. So again, you write genotypes for as many people as you can. Okay, number four, you're supposed to use a Punnett square to solve for unknown genotypes. And I will show you how to do that in just a minute. So you're going to be using Punnett squares anytime you don't know who someone is or what their genotype is you usually do two Punnett squares. And then something that's very important or that you should always do to help you so your paper doesn't get messy is to have a scratch piece of paper out. So once you're done writing these notes, I would take a scratch piece of paper out so we can do these problems together. So again, you should be writing this on your pedigree notes that we have. Next to the symbols, there's this nice blank column you can write this all down on.